Hey, what is up, guys? And today we're going to be taking a look at the Mamba stack. Yes, the 30 by 30 Mamba stack. Now, this has been requested so much, and I have been waiting for it for a very long time. Now, the reason for that is because this is in a 6S stack that's $43 with a flight controller and the ESCs. So let's crack this guy open and let's take a look at this. So here we're greeted with the stack already pre-assembled, which is really nice. And I really love the packaging here. Look at this, it's really nice. So I'm gonna pull this out and let's just take a look at what it comes with before taking a look at the ESC. So they do provide us with an extra wire here to connect our ESC to our flight controller, a Sanyo, Ruby, uh, Sanyo low ESR capacitor. Hopefully, I think these are low ESR capacitor. I need to double check that wire for your XC60 and as well as a black XC60, which is really nice. I really like the black XC60 connectors. So let's take a look at the flight controller. Now, the flight controller itself is an F4 flight controller with OSD, and it can take up to a 6S input. So the voltage regulator on board will handle its regulation for all the internal components. So this thing can take raw 6S input, which is really nice. Now, if we take a look at the ESC, the ESC has minimum filtration, but the FETs look really good. And let's actually crack this guy open. All right, so before cracking this guy open, the whole stack height here is 20 millimeters, which is really nice. So that's two centimeters. So it's a really, really thin stack. And if you take a look at the board of the flight controller, it's a really thin board here. This is probably like, what, one millimeter here? Usually boards come around 1.6 millimeters, all PCBs. It's like the, the standard normal size. So this is something to take note of. So it's gonna be overall very light as well. Um, so, it, cause there's not gonna be much current passing through this guy. So we should be totally fine since it's not an all-in-one flight control. Now, all-in-one flight controllers, you wanna see the board to be as thick as possible so it can handle the most amount of current because the temperatures they, these things go up to is ridiculously insane through my testing. So as you can tell here, they have provided some kind of soft mounting on the bottom of the ESC as we're taking it apart here. And let's remove this. So like I was saying, the FETs on this ESC look really nice, and I think it's an AirBot manufactured ESC here. However, there's no filtration, probably just to reduce some of the costs, but you will need to be adding your low ESR capacitor. Now, I will be testing this with a low ESR capacitor, and I will not remove the low ESR capacitor because I do not want to risk damaging it, and you have to take that into consideration. This is a $43 stack. So, you know, and, and for them to provide this, it, it's actually mandatory for you to put it. I highly recommend that you actually do that. So taking a look at the board here, it looks pretty nice. There's really nothing much to say. Filtration is really minimal. We do have current sensing dust, so that's really nice in that perspective. And it is a Beale Heli SESC, if I remember correctly. So you're not gonna be, you're only paying 43 bucks. So you're getting what you paid for here. And hopefully you're getting a little bit more than what you're paying for here. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the layout of the flight controller here and how this would be connected. So in theoretically, it should be in your quad like so, so you don't play with any orientation if you follow the arrow right there. So if this were to be inserted in our quadcopter, we do have the VCC in ground. Now this can take up to a 6S input if you're not going to be using this, which is also really nice to see. And uh, we do have the USB off to the right, which is really good, and it's uh, accessible that way. And the boot button's down here. I really like seeing that. That's really nice. We take a look at the right here. We have 5 volt ground, TX3, and VID. VID is going to be the VTX output here. I don't know why they named it VID, but that's the way, that's how they did it here. Now, TX3 is supposed to be, if you're going to be using, it's making it ease of access, which is really thoughtful. If you're going to be using smart audio or something of that nature to control the VTX output. Now, I would also have really liked to see that this would have been VCC, or at least a 9 volt regulator on. On board if this had a proper 9 volt on regulator on board that would have been really nice but they do provide you with the 5 volt here which you know you're not going to usually most vtx's take anywhere between 7 and 24 volts so this will not be powering up your vtx however you can get these three here and then if you wanted to power up your vtx i th you could go all the way to vcc here uh since this should be routing through the vcc area uh, from the flight from the ESC here. Next, if we move down, we have the USB, like I mentioned. Then we have five volt. We have ground, five volt, and LED. This is if you wanted to connect the LED. This would be the LED signal, and these would be the power for the LED. So that's really nice and thoughtful. And if we take a look up at the front, it's really nice they added this in the front. It's the camera, ground, and five volt. That's perfect for our camera. And we also have the buzzer right here, which is be it buzzer plus and buzzer minus. So that's where your buzzer would be controlled. Now let's move off to the left here. We have ground five volt PPM. So theoretically, this is where you would be connecting your receiver. So if you had PPM, you would connect it there and you would give it ground and five volt from here. 
And if you had, I believe, S bus, it's going to be an RX1, so you would put it right there. And this is TX1 if you wanted some sort of telemetry. Really nice 3.3 volt regulator. And to be honest, you're going to find 3.3 volt regulators on anything with the STM32 because these only operate on 3.3 volts. So this is for your spectrum type satellite receiver or any receiver that takes 3.3 volts or whatever you wanted to add. SCL and SDA if you wanted to put some kind of GPS, which is really nice. And um, oh, it's actually really nice to have that there. So if we take a look down here, what else do we have? We have another, well, this is the VCC in ground. This is, this is how you would power this up if um, you weren't using the ESC that it comes with. And here we have ground, 5 volts. So we do have another 5 volt here, another power. TX3 and RX3, you can use these for you, whatever you want. Ground, 5 volt. And then we have TX6 and RX6. Now, if you're going to use IBUS, now t take this into consideration. I don't think IBUS will work on RX1. I believe RX1 is going to be for SBUS. So what you would have to do is get po possibly solder your IBUS receiver down here. It would be a little bit easier because you can get ground 5 volt and RX3. And I'll double check the documentation right now just to double check this information. Okay, so currently on the documentation, it's not really saying much, but they do have a picture of an FR Sky receiver here. So I'm guessing that the RX1 input on the right side is going to be the inverted for SBUS. So if you were to connect uh, IBUS on the RX1 here, it would not work. So I'd highly recommend you connect your IBUS on uh, down here somewhere. It would be like RX3 and then just give it power from here. So it will all be next to each other, which would be the best solution. This is what I would do here. All right, so let's take a look at the back side of the board. Hopefully we have a separate way to connect ESCs other than this connector, just in case you didn't get it with the current ESC that it comes with. So if we take a look back here, it looks very minimal, doesn't really have much going for it. We do see our OSD, couple tantalum capacitors, which is really nice to see. And we do have some of the regulators down here. Now, if we take a look, if we take a closer look here, we can actually connect our ESCs down here instead of using this connector if we did not purchase the same ESC, which is really nice. So ground VCC and then one, two, three, four, and then NC not connected. And then the current sensor is going to be here if whatever you're adding has some sort of current sensing. So that's where it would go on that last one right there. So overall, it looks really nice. It seems very well thought out. And I'm really curious how this is going to stack up. Now, when I'm testing this, I will not be testing it with its flight controller. I will be testing with the Matek F405 CTR. That's the only FC I test 4 in 1 ESCs with, as well as regular ESCs, just to keep the standard because each board has different resistance and different rating. And I wanted to keep everything consistent because the main component of a quadcopter, in my opinion, is always the ESC. Because if the ESC is clean, then everything else should be clean. So enough talking. I'm going to prepare everything and let's just get testing. Alright guys, so the results are in and this is the Mamba, the 30 by 30 version. So let's get started. Now, first of all, I did not run the test without a low ESR capacitor because there's basically no filtration on board. So I took the base point of adding that low ESR capacitor that it came with and obviously this is a 4S test. So let's take a look real quick and then we're going to start comparing it to other ESCs. Now remember, this is an F4 flight controller with OSD and a 4-in-1 ESC rated up to a 6S, a theoretical 6S. The MOSFETs look really good on the Mamba, so that, that's something really nice. The filtration, there is no filtration on board, but they do provide you with that Sanyo Star capacitor, which seems to be working really good, actually. So let's take a look at this. 
So up top here, we have the throttle noise level test. S same thing goes for the bottom on the left side here. This is the same thing, but one is color coded. So we kind of see where the voltage was at most of the time. So here we got 10%. 25% throttle, 50% throttle, 75% and 100% throttle. And on the right side, we have these simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. Now, looking at this, it looks pretty good, but other ESCs are noticeably better with a low ESR capacitor. For example, let's bring in a couple ESCs here. So let's start with the Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC. This is the old time best ESC. I'll, leave, I'll have it linked down below if you're curious. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a test with the Tico 32 without a low ESR capacitor right now. So we kind of get an idea of what's really going on. So with a low ESR capacitor, the Mamba performs slightly better than a Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC, which is really nice. But obviously when you add a low ESR capacitor Tico 32, nothing could really beat it. So let's take a look at the noise color without a low ESR also. So as you can tell here, it is performing. So the Mamba with the provided low ESR capacitor is going to perform slightly better than a Tico 32 on uh, just a stock setup with no low ESR capacitor on Tico 32, which is hella freaking good. This stack is cheaper than just the Holly Bro Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC, which is insane, insane. Now, I don't know if I'm going to say, oh my God, the best budget ESC or the best budget stack now because everyone, everyone just keeps complaining about everything lately. Oh my God. You guys are insane. All right, so let's compare to something else. Let's see. So here's the DYS Aria, but the DYS Aria, I didn't do any with the noise with the, with the capacitor. Let's bring the Dell RC Rocket, because I know that I did that one with a low ESR capacitor. This is Dell RC Rocket 45 amp version. So let's take a look at the noise here. All righty. So as you can tell, it's this is still performing really, really good. But the, the Dell RC rocket is slightly better, but it's not really noticeable. I mean, you're not really, it's not really that much of a difference. Uh, so if we bring in the throttle noise level test, this is with the low ESR capacitor on the Dell RC rocket. So as you can tell here, they're about about the same really. Um, so it's it's a, it's overall it's performing very well. Now, the, currently the only reason why I didn't remove the low ESR capacitor is because obviously it's gonna test pretty, possibly pretty bad, but also I do not want to risk uh, ruining anything on that board because it's going to be with the 6S shootout since it's theoretically rated for a 6S and that's the reason why I didn't do that now. I will be removing the capacitor after the 6S shootout so we can get a better look but currently out of the box it is mandatory it's really you have to put that low ASR capacitor that they provide you with. Um, but overall, it's performing really good. The motor sounded smooth. That was really nice. There was no jittering. There was no harsh startups because some cheap ESCs, sometimes they do this weird startup and in, in, in the, the really choppy, nasty startups. This one handled really nice. I was very impressed, actually. I didn't know what to expect. But um, I think you're going to be surprised although also with the Mamba 20x20 20 20 stack. I also tested it with the same exact setup here, which is the Brother Hobby R6 or R7 uh, 2306 2450KV, which is insane. That little 20x20 20 20 stack. We'll check it out later on. But currently, this looks like a really good one here on the bench testing. Really, really nice. For example, let me, let me show you something that's not really that decent. Here we go. Here's a 4-in-1 ESC. I was just absolutely terrible to be honest. So here, here's the yeah. This is what you don't want to see basically. That's, that's exactly what you do not want to see. To see this, we this is basically performing with like just like a Tico 32, which is really nice. Um durability, um, you know, its overall lifespan, I can't answer that, but for it running this clean, theoretically it should last decent enough time really so yeah that capacitor really does help and well you guys have been waiting for it it performed really really good so that's really nice to see and i really hope it was useful to someone out there so if i really did help you find an esc or just to avoid buying an esc please consider joining my patreon and really support the channel i really want to keep this channel going and uh if you could also click the links down below those greatly support the channel and well that's it guys and also if you need any help hit up dronemeshforum.com i'm usually there three times a week I, I try to do my best but currently have a lot of testing to do and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one peace out